So much going on, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, nothing here is in order. I just want to talk about a bunch of stuff. I want to start with this, though. People continue to write me that, JB, if you continue to talk about a collapse long enough, it's going to happen. Because a clock is always right twice. And sooner or later, we're going to have one. And sooner or later, you'll be right. I've been talking about this probably now for a good three years. And what these people don't understand is things have been collapsing around them since 2008. And over the last few years, I don't know about you, but I'm watching this economy and this country collapse daily. And another thing these people don't understand, and these are the same people that go, oh, I'm making money in the stock market. The price that this country is paying for people to make some money in the stock market is astronomical. We are going bankrupt so that a few people at the very top are making money. The average Joe, you know, will write me and say he's, he's making money. The 401k is up, his money market is up. But what they don't understand is tomorrow it can be vaporized. And what they don't understand is the price that this country is paying so that the value of your home is in a bubble. The value of your 401k is in a bubble. The value of your stocks are in a bubble. The, the, the price that we are paying is astronomical. And we are now beginning to see the symptoms of all this uh, money printing, the artificial injections, the quantitative easing. And people still believe things are good because the markets are up. I want to talk about a few things today that tell me things aren't so good. Yes, markets across the board up. Dow Jones up 534 points today. Hurrah, isn't that great news? Even though what we lost another 293, 296,000 jobs, and that's supposed to be the good news because it's finally under 300,000. But more than likely, it will be revised, and next week it'll be back over 300,000 with the revision. But we just had 4.3 million people quit their jobs in August. Something doesn't add up here, ladies and gentlemen, but everything's okay because the markets are up. Even though I continue to see nothing but bad news in the real economy and in the real world. You know, I was at McDonald's yesterday, got a vanilla iced coffee, as I, I do a couple times a week, and I opened up the straw. The straw was half the size of a normal straw. The dimension was half the size of a normal straw. A week ago, I, I got a, a normal straw when I got my iced coffee. Yesterday, the straw, it was half the dimension of a normal straw. We have the BMP tennis tournament out here right now, one of the biggest tennis tournaments in the entire world. It's a ghost town, an absolute ghost town. Oil right now, $81.69. Uh, but markets across the border are are, are doing phenomenal, right? But you're gonna to go to the grocery store today or tomorrow and you're gonna pay more for meat, more for pork, more for fish, more for vegetables, more for fruits. You're gonna pay more at the pump, you're paying more in rent, more, more for health care costs, more for an education. But the markets are up, so isn't that the, the good news? I think people are gonna figure out some point that the stock market and the real economy have detached. There is no relationship. And a few people in these markets are, are laughing all the way to the bank while you pay for it. But don't worry about inflation. Don't worry about shortages. It's all going to be okay, ladies and gentlemen, because corporate earnings outweighed fear today, supposedly, right? So now we have corporate earnings up. How many of these are zombie companies? And how many of these corporations and banks got all the money at the top of the pyramid, got all the opportunity. Uh, banks borrowing money for what? 0.3%, yet you're paying 21% on your credit card, 19%, 27% on your credit card. But Bank of America's up, corporations are up. They're getting all the help, you're not. And people are going to figure it out sooner or later. And many of them are beginning to figure it out now. So here we are. Um, U.S. Open stars fall at Indian Wells, which struggles to draw a crowd. And as I drove by today, I, I was shocked to see the fields uh, 
empty, no cars. They have these enormous uh, fields out there where people park cars. It was empty. I could not believe it. In 2019, uh, we had 475,000 spectators come to the Palm Springs Valley here, Indian Wells, uh, to watch the tournament. It brought over $400 million in revenue to the, to, to, to the Palm Springs region. This year, it's on track to bring about half the amount of spectators. And they're going to be lucky, lucky if, if they pull down $150 million uh, in revenue. That's a humongous drop. Uh, to go from over $400 million to $150 million. Um, so you can figure out, draw your own conclusion why people aren't showing up. Uh, for whatever reason, they're not showing up. But at the end of the day, for whatever reason, why they're not showing up, we know one thing. Uh, they're not spending money here, that's for sure. The resorts here, the restaurants, the retailers, uh, you name it, are being brutalized now because people are not showing up. I mean, it, this is an astronomical number. It's catastrophic for the Palm Springs area. Uh, so many businesses relied on that injection uh, of revenue. It's not here, it's not coming. Foreclosures are surging now that mortgage bailouts are ending. Uh, this is on CNBC, very interesting. Foreclosure starts jumped 32%. In the third quarter of the of this year, from the second quarter, and we're 67 percent higher than the third quarter of 2020. Uh, this is with all the help with aggressive modifications by lenders, and with all these high levels uh, of equity. So, uh, right now, it's not as bad as it's going to be. But what happens when this market corrects? and people don't have as much equity. What happens when the aggressive modifications by these lenders uh, are no longer there? What is gonna happen? Uh, what people don't understand is they may have a lot of equity in their home right now. Their home might've went from 300,000 to 600,000. But when this market corrects, and this correction will turn into a collapse, those homes can be cut in half very, very quickly. Now you don't have as much equity, if any, many people will be upside down and you're in a whole nother world here. But we're beginning to see things uh, really cool down in housing. And I believe we're gonna see big things happening in the housing market in 2022, and they are not gonna be positive. How about this one? This, and, and listen, things are cooling down. People are not showing up to events as they once did. People are quitting their jobs. 293,000 first-time jobless claims last week. Uh, that, that's the great news on TV today, but I don't think it's great news. Uh, but yet the market, Dow Jones up 534 points today. Losing nearly 300,000 jobs in a week should be detrimental to a market but markets across the board up, they don't care. They don't care that people are losing their jobs. They don't care that people are quitting their jobs. They don't care that we are watching infrastructure crumble, opportunity and wealth crumble, the middle class crumble. They don't care. And sooner or later, people are gonna figure out that things aren't good because the markets are up, okay? In all actuality, things are crumbling because the economy is tanking. How about this? This is how good things are. Ford is removing the credit score minimum for 84 month car loans. Uh, so figure this out. There's no cars to sell right now. And Ford is literally going to go subprime with no cars to sell. And I, I don't know what this means, but we're going to allow now people with bad credit to buy a car and finance it for 84 months. What could possibly go wrong with that, ladies and gentlemen? Please comment down below. And if you like this video, even if you hate this video, give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification and share these videos. How about this one, CNBC, prices continue to rise. Here's what's getting the most expensive. This was interesting. And again, comment down below, how are people keeping up with this? Yeah, stock market up. There's some people making some money out there but these are people who are betting big, gambling big to, to make big profits. The average American cannot gamble big and, and, and cannot take these risks. Ground beef, this, the, these are annual price jumps over the past year. Ground beef is up 10.6% from a year ago. Steak up 
2.1%. Steak is going to be a luxury here, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt. Bacon up 19.3%. That's going to be another luxury. Pork roast and ribs up 19.2%. Chicken, 17.4%. Fresh fish, 10.7%. Eggs, 12.6%. And the list goes on. The hedge today. Crisis wiped out entire savings of 20% of U.S. The top 1%, ladies and gentlemen, hold more wealth than the middle 60%. The bottom 50% own just 2% of all net worth. That's $2.8 trillion. The top 1% own $41.5 trillion of net worth. And yet people go, what? What wealth transfer? What's going on? Wealth transfer? What do you mean, JB? Uh, look, st stop watching football, stop playing video games, uh, and start paying attention to what is going on. This is going to affect every one of us. 10,000 uh, John Deere workers walk off jobs in strike over labor contract. How in the world could we lose nearly 300,000 jobs last week, and now today 10,000 John Deere workers walk off and strike, and the markets seem to love it and go up. I, I, I mean, can somebody explain this to me? Uh, again, we know that the Fed is buying it all up and propping it all up. And, you know, again, people will tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I need to be in these markets gambling. Uh, I've seen this movie before, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you have seen this movie before. Uh, I'm going to wait for the sales. I'm not buying into bubbles. I'm not buying a house in a bubble. I'm not buying into the stock market in a bubble. I'm not buying into bubbles. I will wait, keep my powder dry, uh, continue to stack cash and precious metals, and there'll be, a, there'll be a time to jump into these markets. The time for me, at least, is not right now. Enter at your own risk. Uh, the hedge today, brace for price shock, American heating bills to soar up to 50% this winter. Here's more good news. Uh, they're saying that on average, heating bills will go up 30%. But if this winter is 10% colder than last winter, they will go up 50%. Again, how does the average American continue to keep up with this? Not everybody is making money in the stock market. And when you look at uh, who's making money in the stock market, it's the top 10%. The average American can barely fill fill up the, uh, a tank of gas in their car right now. The average American is is having now to rely on credit cards and payday loans. The average American doesn't even have four hundred dollars saved up. The average American now doesn't have anything saved up for retirement. The average American is not prepared for an emergency. And let me tell you, right now we are seeing an emergency. How much debt Americans have at every age? This was an interesting uh, article also on CNBC. Um, people are sitting ducks. Let me, let me say that. So many people, millions out there are sitting ducks. It's too late for millions of people. So many people believe that their pension is going to be their form, their 401k is going to be their form, that their house is going to continue to go up forever. These people are gonna wake up one day and they're not gonna know what hit them. And as I said this in the past, people are gonna finger point, they're gonna blame the banks, financial institutions, they're gonna blame their politicians, they're gonna blame their parents, they're gonna blame everybody except themselves. If you cannot see what is going on right now, I feel sorry for you. People are, are, are in this uh, state of euphoria with these markets. And when I see days like today with what's happening in these markets, I get very, very worried because this bubble is inflating so far beyond anything humanly possible. When it pops, it is going to be absolutely biblical, uh, the damage and fallout we're going to see. Gen Z, people 18 to 23, on average owe $16,000 in debt, a lot of that on credit cards. Millennials, on average, owe $87,000. They have an average student loan debt of $39,000. And according to this article, I don't even believe this, this is even counting mortgage debt, okay? Gen X, 41 to 56 years old, have an average of $140,000 in debt. That's, uh, that includes $45,000 of student loan debt. 
Baby boomers, the oldest being 75, have an average of nearly $100,000 in debt, $6,000 in credit cards, $20,000 in personal loans. Uh, the average baby boomer uh, has $180,000 in mortgage debt. Um, debt is going to be a killer, ladies and gentlemen. And as we inflate these bubbles even more, and the more we inflate these bubbles, the worse it's going to be when they burst. And we have so many people, millions of people holding so much debt. These people are going to be sitting ducks. They are going to be absolutely victimized by this economic collapse and they're going to be wiped out. And especially older people, because they're going to have no chance of rebounding. If you're younger, you have time on your side to come back. But what's going to bring everything back? What kind of opportunity are people going to have as more uh, small and medium businesses close down? Uh, the resorts out here and restaurants in my area struggling. And, and remember, this area, the Palm Springs region here, this is an this is a international destination. And if we're having a lot of pain here, then I know that there's a lot of pain happening all across this country in retail, uh, in leisure and hospitality, resorts, hotels, restaurants, what have you. Look, I, I understand there are areas doing quite well right now, but a majority of this country is in big trouble. And when 51% of U.S. restaurants can't pay their rent in September, uh, in, in August. Um, that's a big, big problem. Uh, that's a huge problem. And when I look at the Westfield Mall, five minutes from my house here, in foreclosure now. Uh, again, these are just bellwethers, red flags, warning me, telling me that things are in trouble, that we're going to see big trouble, that, yeah, it looks great when everything's green on the stock market and the Dow Jones is up 534 points. That's wonderful. But did that change your life today? Did that help you at all today? Uh, I think the average American now is more concerned about how they're going to put food on the table, how they're going to pay their heating bill, how they're going to put gas in the car, how they're even going to make their car payment at this point. But again, there's these people and and people right now still have a job. Um, they're making some money in the stock market. They're making some money in the cryptos. And everything's fine because this isn't their problem. But sooner or later, this is going to be their problem. And what I find very interesting is nobody's talking about what's happening in China right now with Evergrande and, and some of these other development companies who are not paying their bondholders, who are not paying foreign investors or foreign uh, bondholders. Um, why are we not hearing anything about this? And what if, what if uh, these de huge development companies over in China go belly up? What kind of effect does that have on the global economy? Uh, also, factories shutting down in China, manufacturing slowing down. Um, what happens if we cannot get product here that we're so reliant on? No, nobody's worried about anything. It's all about today. It's about the party today. Nobody wants to stop the party. The addict doesn't and will not accept taking the drug stop taking the drugs the addict must must continue the markets must continue to have that shot of methadone every day from the fed to keep things going ladies and gentlemen these markets could not stand on their own two feet without a massive help a massive massive continuous massive injections from the fed and the question is, how long does it continue to go on before it doesn't work any longer, before the, the, the medicine wears off? The more they do this, the more inflation and the more cost you're going to pay for it. You, the middle class and the poor, are being sacrificed for these fraudulent mar markets, for a few people to make some money right now. But remember, if you're making money in these markets right now, remember the cost that this country is paying and that you're going to pay for this too. You may be making some money right now, and God bless you if you are, but wow, the cost that this nation is paying for a few people to make money. The zombie companies, the corporate buybacks, the quantitative easing, the helicopter money, the bailouts, it's all a big fraud. And the majority of people, the middle class and the poor, are going to pay for this. So be ready. Be ready. Just remember, we're paying an enormous price 
to watch the Dow Jones go to 534 points. When these bubbles pop, it is going to be absolutely catastrophic. Everybody is going to feel the pain. Everybody. And I, I think that these people who believe nothing bad can happen, that they, they don't understand what a wealth transfer is, um, I really, I, I pray for these people because they need help. I've never seen anything like this. And every day I see more people hurting. I got people writing me daily about what they're seeing in their areas, uh, what, they're, what they're seeing um, in, in their towns, people that are losing jobs. How in the world is somebody's wages going to keep up with the price of this inflation? And this is just getting started. You ain't seen nothing yet, ladies and gentlemen. Wait till you see what's coming by the end of this year into 2022. And people are gonna cry. They're gonna cry when this housing market bursts. They're gonna cry when they look on that screen and their 401k has been decimated. When they look on that screen and their stocks have been decimated. The people right now who are keeping their powder dry, putting the cash away, buying precious metals. Oh, I know. Buy cryptos, buy cryptos. Hey, more power to you. If you're making money, make sure that you're taking some of the profits and buying real assets and putting some cash away because there's going to be massive sales coming to America and too many people will be wiped out or they have too much debt to take advantage of it. And they are going to be the debt slaves. Make sure you do not allow yourself to be a debt slave. Start thinking like a central bank. The central banks are stockpiling the precious metal, okay? They know what's going on. China knows what's going on. Unfortunately, I, I think China knows a lot more than the average American. I think China is a lot more prepared for what's coming than America is. And I think that's why China is gonna be the next world superpower. Technically, I think they already are. But I'm gonna leave it there today. Just food for thought, thinking out loud, let me know your thoughts. Let me know. Let us all know. What are you doing right now financially to prepare? Are you going into cryptos? Are you putting some cash away? Are you getting the bills paid off, paying off the debts? Um, you're buying gold. You're buying silver. You, you're buying security. You, you're buying food, water. Let us know what you're doing. Give us some ideas, some thoughts of, of, of your preparations, of what you're doing financially uh, to prepare for this. And I understand that... It's not the financials that may get you through an economic collapse because that's food, water, and security, but there's going to be opportunity, just like there was during the Great Depression, um, to take advantage of opportunity during the worst of times. And you're going to need a currency. You're going to need real money to do it. So let me know your thoughts on that. God bless every one of you. I look forward to talking with all of you very, very soon. Stay safe out there. God bless.